Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. It is great to see you here. In this video, we are going to be talking about the upcoming firmware updates to the Canon R5C, which Canon have announced. Canon have already released a firmware update to this camera, and if you're interested to find out more about what changes that has brought in and what effects it has on the camera, I've created a separate video on that and I'll link it just over here. That update improved the image quality of Canon C-Log3. I go into a lot more detail on there, but basically it improves the color science and it has more pop, it looks more natural and more pleasing. There is no change to dynamic range, no change to sharpness, no noise changes, no improvements there, sorry. But shortly after releasing this firmware update, Canon announced another one, and this one is very exciting. So we're gonna take a look at each one of those updates and I'm gonna share my thoughts on it and whatever footage I've managed to find online about it as well. These updates have all been listed on canonrumors.com and I check this website quite regularly to see if there are any firmware updates because this is where they're announced quite quickly and they provide all the links and where to go and download it. They very helpfully list all these new updates coming. So. The first one that they mention on this article, which I'm going to link in the description below, is changing the clear scan function to a more concise range. Before, when you would change your shutter setting to clear scan, which I talk about a bit more in this video about the shutter modes of the Canon R5C, with clear scan, you can basically film a screen without getting all that nasty flickering. I'm gonna show you two examples now so you can see the difference when you have clear scan off and when you have clear scan turned on. If you're shooting a screen, you should be changing to clear scan and I mentioned in that video how you do this. The new firmware is going to introduce a more concise range which basically means that whatever flicker rate the screen has, whatever hertz the screen is, so you have 50, 60, 100 or 120 hertz, for example. So you can switch your camera to that. Now, currently when you're using ClearScan, you've got this thousands. So you have to scroll across and eventually find the setting you're looking for. It takes ages. Having a more concise one will make your workflow much faster. You can find it much quicker and you don't have to scroll all the way across the screen constantly. It is a great improvement. It's a small improvement, but it'll make such a difference to using that feature. So Canon, that is a good shout. They're also gonna give us the opportunity to change the size of the waveform monitor. This is great news because I tend to use zebras or false color to check my exposure because the waveform is so small on the LCD. LSD, LCD. If you were using an external monitor, then the waveform would be much more useful. But on the Canon R5C screen, it is too small to make use of effectively. So being able to change the size of the waveform to fit the entire screen means you'll know exactly where the peaking is happening. It's much more clear. You can assign a button to turn it on and off. Very quickly check to see where the overexposure is. You'll probably have a preference between false color and waveform. This just makes waveform that much more usable. So those changes are coming to all of Canon's cinema cameras. For the R5C more specifically, we're going to be getting some extra changes. Canon are finally going to introduce support for the EF to RF adapter, the 0.71 times focal reducer version. This one came up with the Canon C70 to allow you to use full frame lenses on it. Having this option on the Canon R5C, even though it's already full frame, means that we'll be able to shoot in super 35 mode and get better power efficiency, get more efficient files, especially when shooting in RAW plus a few extra options which are only available when shooting in Super 35. For example, when you're shooting in RAW and you're shooting in Super 35 mode, you're able to get basically dual slot recording where you can have a backup recording in XFAVC 10-bit 422, which is an excellent backup to have when you're shooting in RAW. When you're shooting in full frame, you don't necessarily get these options, so that is excellent. It also means if you can find some medium format lenses that fit an EF mount, you can shoot medium format on the R5C, that's pretty cool. Next up listed in the article, they are introducing faster switching between photo and video mode. Isn't that exciting? I did mention in my review that it's not the end of the world that we have this delay, but if they fix that, 
I'm not going to complain. That's excellent. It means it's a much more usable camera for a lot of people and might mean that you don't necessarily need to have two cameras on a shoot. You could just have one and quickly switch between the two. They've released a video which shows this new firmware that they're working on in action. And you can see there is a great improvement of the time between, well, when switching between modes. I'm excited for that. That is good news. I think the reason why they're introducing a lot of these firmware updates is because of the popularity of the Canon R6 Mark II, because that has instant switching between the two and it doesn't have any limitations on filming. It's got false color. It's got the hot shoe functionality that the R5C has. I think because Canon hadn't released anything for the R5C for so long, and then the R6 Mark II comes out, suddenly they're throwing firmware at us. I think it's because sales of the R6 Mark II shot up and R5C plummeted. A lot of people realize that the R6 Mark II is, I mean, it's very capable as a hybrid camera. And if you can do without those cinema settings or that cinema user interface that the R5C has, why would you spend double the price on the R5C? So the success of that camera I think that's been a good thing for the R5C because now they are finally giving us some firmware updates. They also seem to be addressing all of the issues that I pointed out in my review of this camera. I don't want to take full credit for them fixing this, but obviously I did have some part to play. Delusions of grandeur. And next up, just as I had complained about in my video, they're going to introduce a power saving mode. Why didn't they have this in the first place? I don't know. but. If they're going to introduce it, that is fantastic. I'm very happy that they'll be introducing a power saving mode because we don't always need to have the most, you know, all the power being drained. We don't need to have all of that down something. There's going to be situations where we're quite happy to get less high res 4K or less crazy sharp 4K. With the R5, you have the option between HQ and subsampled. So if they're giving us that option as well in the R5C, great. I probably won't use it that often because I have power solutions, which again, I mentioned in my review. So I'm quite happy with the way those work, but it's always nice having that option that in a pinch, if I don't have my external batteries with me or I don't have enough LPE6 batteries with me that I could put it into power saving mode and still get the job done. That's pretty cool and well done Canon for trying to fix this issue. Next in the firmware updates, they're introducing a two times magnification during 8K MP4 filming. It was weird that this wasn't there. I mean, you can magnify and sharpen so that we can make sure it is in focus, but you only really had that option if you're shooting in 4K. I don't know why that was the case because you would have other cinema cameras making use of the full sensor and still able to punch in in order to get critical focus. Why couldn't they do that with this camera? It's good they're introducing that with the new firmware. Next up is an option that I really loved with the Canon XC15 and XC10 in that there is a digital teleconverter that they're going to be introducing. So this is going to be really useful for when you don't need 8K or you don't need 4K and you don't want to have to go into the menu, change to Super 35 or change to Super 16. Being able to assign a button if you were doing an event or something where you only wanted to use one lens, where you can just push one button and it has the digital tally conversion to longer focal lengths for that lens, that's excellent. Yeah, there will be a loss in quality, but like I said before, the amount of sharpness coming out of this camera in the first place means that it we are able to sacrifice a little bit of resolution to get a more usable and a more flexible camera. Basically, this might mean you never have to change lenses because you could put on a 24 to 70 and use the digital teleconversion to get closer in shots. Without having to change lens, just a push of the button. Excellent, excellent update. Finally, and this is something that a lot of people complained about, the autofocus. I don't think I even mentioned it in my review because it's just, it's a fantastic autofocus. In the photo mode, it is as good as the R5, and in cinema mode, it is as good as the C70, which I never had any issues with. In fact, it's a bit better than the C70. So autofocus has been fantastic. We can see from this video from Canon Japan that this upcoming firmware update introduces 
much better autofocus and far more intelligent tracking. That's going to be great. Any improvements like that are welcome. But I think the most exciting updates are definitely the improved speed between the photo and video modes and a power saving mode and the digital teleconverter. I think those are definitely the things to look forward to. So if you didn't already know about those firmware updates that Canon is going to be introducing, when are they going to be introducing? I hope this fills you with some excitement because this firmware update is going to take a camera that is already fantastic and make it into something even better. And I'm very excited for those changes. I can't wait. If you want to know more about the previous firmware update that Canon released just last week, where they improved the quality of C-Log3, then do check out my other video where I go into that in a lot more detail. So check that one out and I shall see you in the next one. Take care.